Throughout the Americas, tobacco, by itself and in combination with other sacred herbs, lies at the heart of the social, cultural, and spiritual life of American Indian nations. Among many Indian tribes, only herbal tobaccos were used exclusively for ceremony and healing, while for other tribes, tobaccos containing nicotine were also used. One of the most powerful ways in which the tobaccos are ritually smoked is during the pipe ceremonies. The sacred pipes are various in shape and design depending on the tribal culture. The great buffalo nations of the plains, with their Chanupa Wakan, their sacred pipe, prayed to the great spirit, creator, who in his form as the sun is called grandfather and as the earth is called grandmother. Tobacco has always been considered all across this land to be one of the most sacred of the plants that was given to the people. So if someone says, you know, do you smoke tobacco? I go, no, I pray with tobacco. There was a man among Lakota Nation named Tustic, and he spoke about the tobacco we shall be walking, walking in a way of life. Now that's what we are doing today. And there's a song for this tobacco. When the guardians of traditional lands, such as this birthing rock, are honored, one always leaves a sprinkling of tobacco. When honoring a loved one, an elder, or a respected medicine man, one offers a gift. And the sign of highest respect is the presenting of tobacco. Tobacco presenting is very holy. That's why you have to put it in a hive. Just like these, just like these now, they present this to me in a hive, tobacco. Time in a moment. Every time we see a medicine man, holy man, we give him tobacco. Someday he's gonna say, someday he's gonna say, this tobacco, this tobacco have chemicals. It's been touched by manufacturing. I wanted original tobacco, so go back and bring the tobacco and your tribal tobacco and hand it to me. This tobacco is nothing to be played with. When you present all this tobacco that presented to me, it was all holy. When uh, somebody comes to your territory and uh, in no way to offend you, out of respect, they come to you with tobacco. Whether it's tobacco from their land or whatever, you know, but uh, it doesn't matter what kind of tobacco. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a symbol of respect. We have used tobacco since time when man started walking the earth. When contact took place and the Europeans came into our country, into our lands. Many areas had tobacco, but it did not have gold. And so the tobacco became the gold for the Europeans. Tobacco came from the south direction. Tobacco, you know, that grew like this, this color, gold. In the beginning, 
All people had instructions on how to live on Earth. And I said long ago, even before the white buffalo calf woman brought the pipe, that there were no diseases. And all things lived on Earth in a great peace. But that when man started to multiply, they started to kill the animals to live. And then the animals held a great council. And they decided that for every animal that is killed, there would be a new disease brought on man. But the tree was friends to man, the trees. And when they heard what the animals did, the tree plant lives had a great council. And they decided that for every disease that uh, befall man, one plant would offer itself up as a cure. So when the many problems started to happen, the white buffalo calf woman appeared with this bundle. And she brought with this bundle instructions on how to live, how to respect things, how to keep things sacred. Fire is the primal force from which creation emerges. The sun, grandfather, brings light and warmth needed for life to exist and his presence can be felt in the heart of all ceremonial fires. Dancing in the flames are the spirits of the ancient ones who continue to teach the people. The first instruction, to acknowledge the sacredness of the life around us, to acknowledge the sacredness of this gesture, the sacredness of the fire. Before we put the fire in, is that we put our tobacco down and ask the Creator to take care of what's to be done here and, and that it's been done in a, in a real good way and that our minds and our hearts become one with the Creator and that all good will happen at this fire. As I look into the Creator's eye, the fire before me, that is His eye, looking at us all equally, all as one people, native people of this land, South, Central, and North America, all connected, like the shell on the turtle. And when you do pray with tobacco, you know, just don't throw it in there like that. You gotta take your time, be in tune, feel the fire, feel the earth, the air, the surroundings, and then offer it in a real gentle and humble way with respect and honor and peace and dignity. You experience that, that smoke. It's different than the smoke that's in a fire. There's the fire there. But when you pray and we offer this tobacco to the Creator, is that you get that different type of smoke. And it, that smoke, as it mixes with the other, it's carried into the sky, into, up to the Creator so that all your, all your words that you have put into that tobacco are heard and seen. And to the Lakota, she showed us that we would use the underbark of the red willow, that was our tobacco, shashasha, that's what it is. And what we know now today that because of the hard life that they lived, she gave that instruction because the underbark of the red willow is aspirin. The way we pray with the tobacco, Shushka uh, Huyaminix, is a prayer coming uh, or holy spirit. When the the Shushka is used appropriately and prayed with, if you if you notice when uh, you 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 just smoke a cigarette, we just real fast. And, uh, but when you're in prayer, it, it takes on a different, different shape. And the majority of the time, you really don't inhale it unless you're being doctored for a certain 
uh, ailment that you have. So the whole metabolism of the body takes on a different way of processing, which uh, becomes huella, which becomes divine. And, and in the red man's way, grandpa and grandma already prepare this. Your voice box, your tonsils. And right there, there's a filter. So there is some beauty to it. There's some unscientific uh, explanation to it. I usually go outside in, in the morning or when I'm, I'm not feeling good or I, or I have a burden and I sit out there in the circle and I and you know I roll a cigarette and then as I smoke it it allows me to clear my thoughts and clear my spirit up and I start talking to the Creator and I think that's what the elders they used to do that and our people used to do that they used to use medicine the tobacco in a medicine form so that like my companion said you know it puts you in a different state of mind and this is what well, Hushasha is a mixture of blend that is used that brings peace of mind to put us in that prayer and that smoke then goes and dissipates in the universe. Uh, Uncle Charlie Kilsen and me uh, from the Lakota Nation showed me a way to do a certain ceremony that you use tobacco ties. So it's a prayer. You're constantly praying. A uh, tobacco tie is um, one tobacco tie would just be a small piece of fabric, say uh, one and a half inch square, two inch square and then it has just a little offering of tobacco inside that you tie up with a string with um, many other tobacco ties connected to it, so it's a long, a long uh, cord of prayers. The tobacco ties are for certain ceremonies. You do a certain amount for each. It was just a wopila ceremony to give thanks. Well, then you make so many, 75 tobacco ties. For another kind of ceremony, you make a different amount. But each one is a prayer. It's a preparation to get ready for ceremony. And the drum is essential to American Indian ceremonial life. Creation, Earth Mother, the heartbeat of everything can be heard in the drum as it calls us back to the center of existence, back to our own truth. To receive permission from the Great Spirit to bring the drum to life, to make it sacred requires the gift of tobacco. Ever since I was little, you know, I'm sure my mother has always put tobacco in my hand and prayed for me and tossed it in into the fire or under the ground of Mother Earth. And, and in that way, it helps me to get to remember that I must always offer tobacco. And, and my father has always taught me to offer tobacco to the drum. When we offer to the, the tobacco to the drum, we're, we're asking the Creator to help our voices and our hands in order to make our, our music and our instruments make happiness for the people. And we ask the Creator to bring, bring beauty into our, into our words that we sing. Uh, Azteca myth. These two warriors, you know, they were two humble people working together, gathering food for the people. And from the east, they saw this light come down. From the rays of the sun came down a spirit, the spirit of a woman. This woman's very sacred. She tells these two humble men about these two plants that are growing side by side. Tobacco and corn. Maize. Maize for food for the people. So they can go on living, so they can eat, so there's plenty. 
and tobacco to heal for the people. The Southwest people of my father's side of the family, the corn husk, and maybe the mountain tobacco or the herbs that tobaccos. There are many kind of tobaccos. And then I have this here tobacco. This comes from Mexico. Now the Mexican Indians use this tobacco to pray, to heal people, to go into a trance, to ask for visions, so they know how to diagnose the problem of the person that they need to work on. We take our seeds and we, we, we throw them out there and, and they'll grow where they want to grow. Uh, you can't tell our tobacco that you have to grow in a row <laughs> um, because they won't. And the difference in our tobacco is too is, is, is the color. Um, Ours is pure, is not cured in a, in, in a kill. So there's a different texture to the, to the tobacco. And uh, I think the reason why it turns so brown is uh, it's uh, the chemicals that are, 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 that are absorbed into to when it dries. This sage here is local sage here. Pukate. Pukate refers to all of the, the secret tobaccos in our language. The yerba santa, the mullen, the mugwort. It's used when we, when we, when we do medicines, it's burnt the same way. Uh, we put it in a, as a tea and we wash our bodies. And, and you can drink it too, but not too much. Those of you going to hear this, or even in the world's national archives. What does tobacco do to a man? He made a freedom. He made a peace to make relation. Tobacco used for ceremony. Tobacco used it for when return a hunter and return an elder and deliver a child to this universe. The warriors use this tobacco. The horses run, they run with that horse. Breathing condition, lungs condition, it's so beautiful. It's got on top of that horse using this tobacco. By the tobacco, he breathed on that horse and he was tame. It tamed the man, it tamed the spirit, it tamed the relation. It made a real beautiful friendship of our people. And this tobacco that I hold can heal people, can heal wounds inside and outside, get rid of negative energy. This is a healing plant. Long time ago, tobacco leaves Tobacco mix. We mix it with the leaves of the oak trees. We have used with uh, native antibiotics, which grows in the oak tree. Uh, and you mix it with the, the shunshka, and you put it on wounds, and it, it, it cauterizes the wound. Grandmother smoked uh, what we call Curly duck. It's a big plant of curly duck. And what they did is probably selected the dry leaves at their bottom. And they'd roll them up and with string or anywhere maybe they used uh, dog's bane because dog's bane is what they use for string. You know, they used to use dog bane and make string out of They tied the tobacco up like this. Of course, during her time, she used regular paper, you know. and she smoke it. And I understand it may have been for, uh, she may have had an asthma problem or, or, or uh, 
a uh, problem with her lungs. Frequently we have very powerful spiritual people, medicine women, medicine men that um, come to the canyon. And upon one occasion I re can recall Bearheart who had a healing ceremony. But before it started, there was the smoking of tobacco done in a very sacred manner. And the tobacco, the smoke, the fire was in all four directions. And it was not until that took place did you truly feel one with where we were. The healing effects of tobacco from a native perspective is very real, it's very honest, and very much a necessity. Each stage of life, from birth through adolescence, old age, and finally death, is ritually acknowledged and blessed with tobacco. Whenever a family member passed away, they always took tobacco and uh, sort of just uh, spread it like in a circle over the uh, open grave. Now that I work as a uh, private consultant with the archaeologist on protecting Native American remains and uh, burial sites, ceremonial sites, uh, a lot of times I am called upon to do reburials. And uh, it's automatic. It's something that I just uh, reach in my pocket and take a modern cigarette tear the filter off and remove the paper and take the tobacco and uh, throw it like I've seen done over the years. Whenever they buried their dead, sages used the blessings. We're always those sages, different types of sages, you know. I know that a lot of prayers were spoken where people were put to rest. We understand that we have a high respect for the tobaccos. To me, it's sort of like uh, an offering, like other people usually put a flower or they uh, put a handful of dirt. And the tobacco, to me, is the same uh, offering, like uh, a peace offering or something to uh, hurry the spirit onto their other world. Sometimes I sit, as I sit right now with this ulun, abalone, ulun, and the pukate, and I may sit in an area that I know my people, my ancestors used, where they danced and they cried and they sang. The women especially, where they grind the acorns. Spiritually, I get the feeling and I can hear their songs, I can hear their voices as they're grinding the acorns and they're pounding in the bedrock motors singing the song. And they speak. And they say, come, return to this place and sing our songs and do the dances as grandmother has instructed, as grandfather has taught, and the creator. Ho Tarataruk. Ancient tribal values teach the vital importance of entering into a sacred relationship with all of life in order to create balance, harmony, and health. We know that all around us in this in this place here, the spirits are watching us. They can hear us. And that we acknowledge the spirits by offering us tobacco. We know that keeping things sacred is what the true essence of her message was about, keeping things sacred. You know, in this way of life, we always come before the rising sun in the morning, you know, to the east and greet it in a good way. And we always use the sacred tobacco to offer a prayer. 
But before, before we offer that prayer, you know, we purify our mind and body. You know, we're connected with the earth and the Creator up above in our surrounding area. And to be at peace and hold that tobacco in your left hand closest to your heart. When I hold tobacco and I pray and I, I, I ask for guidance, is that I learn real quick. The teachings come from within. <clears throat> Because I'm one with the Creator and one with my own mind, one with my own heart. And it helps us when we, when we use these, these things that uh, also that were put here, the turtle, the water drum, in our songs. burn tobacco, you acknowledge all things in creation. Uh, and as you go through those acknowledgments, um, and just as you and I would acknowledge each other, um, and, we, and we, we greet and maintain that connection, so we do that with the grass, and we do that with the, with the birds, and we do that with the animals. Once you've acknowledged your relationship with all of those things, you can't ignore it. There's a knowing inside of you that um, keeps you in balance and if you're knocked off balance then you have all of your relatives around you that will help you you know regain your balance whether you just need to get up and walk outside and, and breathe fresh air or or look out the window and, and, re and look at those trees that they're not just decoration on a skyline they're not just decorations for your yards we take people to the tree and heal them. Every morning uh, back home, it's uh, not unusual to see someone out early in the morning taking a young child there and asking the tree to look after this young child, make an offering tobacco to the tree and, and pray to God through this tree. You hear a lot of people say, well, our land, the land belongs to the Creator, the Rataruk. We are merely put here as the first inhabitants of this land to care for it, to keep it in balance, to respect it. There's a purpose to everything in this life, and when we offer our tobacco, we talk about those things in that relationship. We, t we don't just talk about the relationship, but we talk about the purpose that each one has in that relationship, the role that each one has in the relationship and the responsibility that goes with that. In relationships, uh, the use of tobacco goes back to that understanding and commitment that you have not only in relationship to the person but with the tobacco as well. So if there's still strong feelings between people, um, then you need that time to wait until um, the feelings have settled down. Peace is something that's within us. Sometimes when we carry that anger, that anguish, that frustration, that hopelessness, and you experience that, that moment, or when you smoke the pipe or you share the pipe, and you pray with it, it brings that peace so that, that you're not cluttered with the anger, that you can see it more objectively. Now, how are you going to be and how are you going to act is, is really important because that's the only way that positive prayer and positive healing can work through this tobacco because this tobacco is sacred. And also, it can make you sick, too. It can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing with it. It's not the red man that abuses tobacco. It's somebody. And you can figure that out easy if you want to research. When I see a billboard or a banner across a main street of a town that says, tobacco is abuse, it saddens me. Tobacco use in smoking is abuse. But tobacco use again, in a sacred manner, is not. 
where people originally never smoked tobacco like they do today with cigarettes. Um, it was never meant to be abused the way that it is today. It was never meant to be a, a, a commodity for people's own self-gain. It was never meant to, uh, to kill people. It's the same with alcohol. It was once used as a spirit, a very sacred spirit, and people started to use it excessively and socially, and then there was, they took the dignity out of something that is a strong spirit. It can destroy the people who use it. In Bolivia, the leaf of the cocaina, and there's a certain way you pray with it. You take it with, you pray with it constantly, and you take it with three fingers. There's a special way to just pick that up, and you pray with it. And uh, they say that when you take the dignity out of these things, they will destroy you. Tobacco is like, um, <clears throat> many people abuse it, but like it's something that shouldn't be abused. It should be, you know, loved, because it's used for many things, like he said, you know, it sends off your prayer. And I see many people doing it, you know, and I look at the cigarettes and I decide what's more important. What I tell most of the kids anyway, and, and, and adults that I talk with, or, is that be careful of what your thoughts are while you're smoking. Be careful of what you're, what you're saying when you're smoking. Um, the, sm the tobacco that we have is is a uh, is a real sacred thing and, and and it it can hurt you if you misuse it and uh, a lot of times we do we use it to to hide and so if you're going to use it to hide then you're going to end up getting hurt and uh, part of that hurt is is that you can end up with 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 cancer I smoked until um, my early 20s and uh, didn't understand that time what I was doing, why I was doing it. And not too many, not too long ago, I had the occasion to really, really want to smoke cigarettes again. And I didn't understand at that time, you know, and I had to ask myself, why was I craving tobacco that way? You know, I hadn't wanted to smoke um, for years. And when I looked around at my life, and I looked at how I was responding or re and reacting to life, what I saw was um, that I, uh, it had become more than I could handle. And the more helpless I felt, the more I wanted to smoke. The more hopeless I felt, the more I wanted to smoke. When I was younger, I was involved in the drugs. And, and when, when I was, I guess you would say, caught, you know, I really took a look about my life and what I was taught about the ways that I live. And I realized and I thought, I said, what am I doing? You know, why, why am I living the life of the drugs? Why am I becoming a part of that society when I have something so much better over here? And so I thought for many weeks about what I should do to, I, I guess, make up for the mistake that I made or to correct it. And so, I had gathered money, and I had put it to put on a ceremony to which I went in the sweat lodge for four days and four nights, and I prayed. I asked the Creator for forgiveness, to forgive me for what I have done to my family, to the people, my friends around me. And so when I came out, all my friends and all my family were there to support me. They were all there for me. And I think that's what the kids need now. We need to start taking them into the circles. We need to start taking them to the sweat lodges. And that's what we have to teach our children is to love each other, no matter what. 
Because right now the children of the streets, their hearts are full of, they're, it's stone, their hearts right now. Yes. And it's important now to take them back home to the ceremonies the way I was taken back. And I feel a sadness when I see young people just insisting on doing that, insisting on smoking just because everybody else is doing it. Because it, it's so social, nobody says it's wrong anymore. Until you get a health warning, then you know. So I think it's the instruction to keep things sacred was what got off track in this society, and like a lot of societies where kids are smoking now. And you'll see kids getting cancer at a younger age because the tobacco has even got more stuff in it that makes people get addicted to this. But in our old way, when we took the underbark of the red willow and took the dry things in the summertime and crushed them up and put them together, it was a medicine in it. There is no nicotine in this tobacco. There's nothing that's gonna hurt you in this tobacco. It's a medicine. It's a medicine spiritually, and it's a medicine for anything that may be ailing you. Yeah, I'm very concerned about the, the young people today because that outer life is, it can be very, very rugged. What's going on in those streets, racism, gang wars, and I just look and I just shake my head. I would ask these children, will you come into my world for a short time? If I may speak and teach you what I feel and what I know, and maybe you'll get a better understanding. We'll smoke the tobacco together, my tobacco. Hopefully you will get a better understanding what's ahead in this life, how you can come closer with understanding in this world we live today, how you can cope with life and be strong, bringing all people together in a circle, all people, one nation, a circle of love. This is what I've been taught. And this is why I practice. Tobacco is the gift which is given to Earth Mother whenever anything is taken from her, whether it is salmon from the river, sweet grass for blessing and purification, the inner bark of the red willow for tobacco, or other native herbs such as mugwort, which is used for protection and healing. Those who do catch poison oak, all you need to do is pick some mugwort, squeeze it, take it and put it in the water, and rub it where you may have been exposed to poison oak. But before you pick the mugwort, you acknowledge the presence of that mugwort. You explain what it's going to be used for. And then you offer tobacco. You share. You acknowledge and you share. And that life knows what it is to do that will help you because we offered it to Bethel. So you make that connection like that. It's a constant flow of energy and that energy is all good what you're doing because you're asking that plant in a good way to come with you. So you can use it to maybe help heal someone or maybe help heal yourself the sun dance ceremony, the sweat lodge purification ceremony, and the use of sacred tobaccos have existed since the beginning of tribal memory. Today, these sacred ways still guide, help, and heal those who have returned to their own cultural and spiritual traditions. And what is so important, particularly for native peoples who are urban Indians, who are not on the res, and a lot of their traditional practices are no longer practiced. And that is primarily uh, due to the circumstances of which we are in today. Uh, I, I say to them that learning the traditions 
of your culture is extremely important. Don't ever forget the instructions of your ancestors. If you don't know, you go back and you ask the elders, the ones that are still left, the ones that still know before it's too late. There was a time that came in my life. I had known of the sweat lodge. I had known because of my grandfather and my grandma. And they had spoke about these sacred ways of the old times, but they would always be whispering. They'd always be, you know, it was, we weren't supposed to do this. And I, I was like any other youth, drinking, carrying on, partying, and I, I lost hope. To me, came a time where it was a question of life and death. A 357 Magnum was put in my head. And the authorities told me very clear. I was going back to the penitentiary or die. I did not want to do either. So I went to the elders up north and invited me into the lodge. So I kept going. I kept going to the ceremony. But I still had the bottle and some herb. Well, I hid it. I composed myself. I became part of that ceremony. And it felt good. It felt beautiful to me. And I quit everything. began to see life a little different, more sacred. And I said, I used to make speeches in public, I'll die for my people. And one of the elders says, nephew, why don't you live so that your people will live? Learn this tradition, take it home, make it part of your life so that your people can have hope and vision made sense to me and they talked about family and they talked about the future generation no ceremonial item is more important than the sacred pipe for the Lakota people each sacred pipe finds its origin in the first pipe which was brought to the people in ancient times by the white buffalo calf woman. Today, in traditional families, the sacred pipe, the Chanupa Wakan, is brought out only for prayer and ceremony. When I uh, very first started walking this road, my teacher was a Kickapoo. And I remember sitting for the very first time in an Anipi when he brought out his chanupa, I was almost afraid to touch it because I knew it was so sacred and it was so special. And that was my first experience. And smoking that chanupa during that ceremony, I knew that I was holding something that was alive. I knew that I was holding something that had been brought to the people and had been shared, these ways had been shared for hundreds and hundreds of years. And as I was holding it and as I was praying, I could feel it moving in my hands. And it was like, I was almost afraid of it, but at the same time, I didn't want to let go because it was so beautiful and powerful. When tobacco is smoked in the sacred pipe, 
each grain represents a part of creation itself, so that all of creation is in fact contained inside the pipe bowl. The pipe in California is long and some were small. And you pack it. Praying also. You're praying. As the bowl and the pipe is the center of the universe. That's our center of our universe. We call it Ikpa Duta, it is the center. And when we put tobacco in the center of our universe, it is a moment of great truth taking place. So you take this force and you offer over the tobacco or the, or the sage brush or the sweet grass. And you throw your voice to the four directions and you load it and you pack it, concentrating on that divine prayer for the people, for Mother Earth, to the four directions. Each direction has a meaning. For the East is understanding, is respect. For the South is spiritual growth, honor. And for the West is for peace and for strength. And for the North is for dignity and wisdom. So we gather all those four directions and we come to the center. Right here is our center, where we stand where we sit and how we conduct ourselves. We are in the center of all, of all life that's connected. So I play a song for you, creator of all things, Earth Mother. been taught was that sacred people held the, t the pipes or the medicine people they would hold the sacred pipes and that's how they would talk to each other if there was a discussion or something needed to be talked about amongst people then that's how they would bring people together by smoking the pipe so whatever you said you had to say it in a good way in an honest and true way because if you didn't then much harm would come, not necessarily to you, but to those around you, your children, your companion. There are responsibilities that go with carrying a pipe, as there are responsibilities with walking this road. And only if the Tunkashulas or the grandfathers um, can recognize the goodness and the clarity with which a person walks this road, um, does a Chanupa come to you? Before I received my Chanupa, my older brother, he told me, if you accept this pipe, you choose the responsibilities that you must do and carry with this pipe. And he said, you don't have to, but this is beautiful medicine that will help you through your life. And I broke down in tears because my own brother had offered me this pipe. And he gave it to me, and I accepted it, and I received those responsibilities. A chanupa is given to you by someone who has been watching you, who has seen what you, how you walk the road, has put you through tests, pretty basically, um, to see how you react and how you respond and how you carry yourself. and. Um, and this is not something that is taken lightly. This is something that comes over a period of time. And then I realized that what was just given to me can never be ever given to me by any other way of life except for my own. 
And I realized that the drugs and the alcohol and all those bad things would never give me that feeling that I got when my brother handed me that pipe. When I first saw the fur pipe ceremony, I came into a large room and it was being held and I was a young man, uh, a lot younger then. And I noticed one thing happened right away. All the children were playing and everything, but everything got hush quiet. Then I realized a kind of power that has nothing to do with money or nothing to do with bombs and tanks and guns. A power that has nothing to do with a, uh, so much physical and tangible thing, but it had a power in a power of silence. Because in silence is the voice of God. When we pray, there's a, just the prayer itself, mitakuyasin, is all my relations, for all my relations. When we go in that door, we say, for all my relations. When we come out, all my relations. Why we go in there? We don't go in there for ourselves. In, in the Indian way, we don't pray for ourselves. We pray for all the relations. We stand in a circle and pray. We pray for all the relations. Helping the people is, is, I think, probably the biggest responsibility of being a pipe carrier. And to always pray. We're not praying for ourselves. We're praying for the other people. We're praying for the seven generations to come. The Chanupa has always been a part of my life since I was brought into this world by my parents. It was there. It'll always be there, and, and it has always been a part of our family. So, everything that governs us is really from the spirit world. And in order to deal with the spirit world, you have to be truthful with everything that you do. Because the spirit world knows whether you are or not. It teaches us how to take care of one another. It teaches us to, to, to be of one mind and one heart. It teaches us how to, to look at things in a good way. It teaches us how to want to be with one another and accept life <clears throat> for what it really is. So there's many ways, and there's many forms in the Native American life on this land, South, Central, and North America, on how we conduct ceremonies, and how we use, and how we pray with sacred tobacco. So the reverence of your words is very important, and it has to be very very strong. You have to be very connected, like the fire, you know. You got to honor that tobacco. You got to honor your people with that tobacco. You got to come from the heart, got to come from the mind, as the heart and mind work together as one, so we can all grow together. Relatives and relations across this country, you may hear this. It's good time to know ourselves. It's good time to learn something very holy for education purposes and again, spiritual purposes. Why? It was a dream and a vision. 
It's about being humble, and it's about being close to the Earth Mother. It's about being close to the traditions and honoring all of the teachings that have come down. The sweet fragrance of the burning tobacco and the prayer-filled smoke which rises to the heavens is always welcomed by the Great Spirit. Oh, God. 